we want to find the equations that balance the given chemical reaction. The mass balance theory states that we cannot create or remove atoms within a chemical reaction. In this case, we must have the same number of potassium, oxygen, phosphorus, and hydrogen atoms on both sides of the reaction. So because the reaction has four compounds total, we introduce four variables. I will use x sub 1 through x sub 4, which become the coefficients of each compound. And now we write a system of equations using each type of atom. Let's first focus on phosphorus, which is K, here and here. Notice on the left we have one atom of potassium, on the right we have three, and therefore X sub one times one must equal three times X sub three, or X sub one must equal three X sub three. And now let's look at the oxygen atoms here, 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 and here. We have one atom of oxygen here, four atoms of oxygen here, four atoms of oxygen here, and one atom of oxygen here, which means x sub one times one plus four times x sub two must equal four times x sub three plus one times x sub four, or just x sub one plus four x sub two must equal four x sub three plus x sub four. And now let's look at hydrogen. We have one atom of hydrogen here, three atoms of hydrogen here, and on the right we have two atoms of hydrogen, which means one times x sub one plus three times x sub two must equal two times x sub four. Or x sub one plus three x sub two equals, on the right, two x sub four. And for the last equation, we look at phosphorus. We have one atom of phosphorus here, and one here on the right, and therefore, one times x sub two must equal one times x sub three, or x sub two must equal x sub three. For the next step, let's write these equations as homogeneous equations, by setting the right side equal to zero. So for the first equation, we would have x sub one minus three x sub three equals zero. For the second equation, we would have x sub one plus four x sub two minus four x sub three minus x sub four equals zero. For the third equation, we have x sub one plus three x sub two minus two x sub four equals zero. And for the last equation, we have x sub two minus x sub three equals zero. And now we write the system of equations as an augmented matrix. Because we have four equations with four unknowns, we will have a four by five augmented matrix, where each equation will give us one row in the augmented matrix. Column one will be the coefficients of x sub one, Second column will be the coefficients of x sub two, and so on. The fifth column will be the constants, which in this case are all zero. So the first equation gives us the row of one, zero, negative three, zero, zero. The second equation gives us the row one, four, negative four, negative one, zero. The third equation gives us the row one, three, zero, negative two, zero. The fourth equation gives us the row zero, one, negative one, zero, zero. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. We will do this using the Desmos matrix calculator. Now we click RREF for reduced row echelon form, select matrix A and enter. On the right, let's use the convert to fraction button. And let's go ahead and record the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form.
because we have the matrix in reduced row echelon form, the first non-zero entry in each row is a pivot. The pivots are here, here, and here. And therefore we know the basic variables are leading variables are x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three. And x sub four is a free variable. From here we'll use each row and write the corresponding equation. Looking at row one, x sub one minus x sub four is equal to zero. In the second row, we have x sub two minus one third x sub four equals zero. In the third row, we have x sub three minus one third x sub four equals zero. And the fourth row is all zero, so we don't have an equation here, but we do know x sub four is a free variable. Let's let x sub four equal x sub four. Also, because x sub four is a free variable, let's solve x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three in terms of x sub four. In the first equation, we have x sub one equals x sub four. In the second equation, we have x sub two equals one third x sub four. In the third equation, we have x sub three equals one third x sub four. And we already know x sub four can be anything. x sub four equals x sub four. So all these equations must be true in order for the chemical reaction to be balanced. Because x sub four is a free variable, we often introduce a parameter, let's say t, and write all these equations in terms of t. So to parameterize the equations, we let x sub four equal t. If x sub four is equal to t, then x sub one is also equal to t. x sub two is equal to one third t and x sub three is equal to one third t. So it's common to express the equations in either of these two forms, either in terms of the free variable x sub four or in terms of the parameter t. Either way, these equations must be true in order for the chemical reaction to be balanced. And let's take a look at one example. If we use the parameterized equations, we can let t be any value. Let's let t equal three. If t is three, then x sub one is three, x sub two is one, x sub three is one, and x sub four is three. And if we sub these values back into the chemical reaction with the variables, we get this chemical reaction here that is now balanced. Let's just verify that it is balanced by checking the number of atoms of potassium, oxygen, phosphorus, and hydrogen. So focusing on the potassium, we have one atom of potassium here times three, which gives us three. On the right, we have three atoms of potassium. So the atoms of potassium are balanced. And now let's take a look at the oxygen. We have oxygen here, 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 and here. So on the left, we have three times one atom of oxygen, that's three, plus one times four atoms of oxygen. We have seven atoms of oxygen on the left. On the right, we have four times one plus one times three, which is also seven. And now let's look at the phosphorus, which is here and here. We have one times one atom of phosphorus, which is one. And on the right, we also have one times one atom of phosphorus. And then finally, let's look at hydrogen. We have hydrogen here, here, and here. On the left, we have three times one atom of hydrogen plus one times three atoms of hydrogen. We have six atoms of hydrogen on the left. On the right, we have three times two atoms of hydrogen, which does give us six atoms of hydrogen. Notice the number of atoms are balanced on the left and right. The chemical reaction is balanced. So for any value of T, the chemical reaction would be balanced. I hope you found this helpful.